Good day everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, today we have another little repair video on the Olympia Splendid 33. Uh, this was a little intermittent problem that it was doing. It actually was doing it when I first got it and I tinkered with it and it went away and then it came back again. So yesterday I delved into this, but I kind of want to cover uh, how I fixed it. So the problem was the line lock was intermittently not releasing. So what is the line lock? Well, when you get to the right margin stop, there's a little plate that slides in the comb area. The comb area is right behind the key levers, and it has slots for the key levers to move in. And this line lock is a little plate that slides, and it keeps the key levers from being pushed down if you're at the right margin. And what it's supposed to do is, when you then move the carriage back off of the right margin, that line lock plate is supposed to slide back a little bit so that the slots in the line lock plate line up with the slots in the comb and the tight bars are free to move again. And it wasn't releasing, it was hanging up. And so um, I had to dig into this and figure out what was happening and I'd like to show you what I found. Stay tuned. Well, again, as in the last video, we're going to take off this screw on the top left panel and then the six screws on the bottom. and remove the bottom plate. Just to show you how I repaired this, I'm only going to need to pull off the left side plate. I can leave the right one on. In normal operation, when you get to the right margin, the line lock prevents the keys from being pressed down. And then as you back off of the right margin during the carriage return, the line lock should freely release. Here you can see the slots of the comb where the key levers slide through those slots as the keys are operated. The line lock is a similar slotted plate that's behind the main comb on the bottom half of it. And when it slides over to a, a little bit off center, it will block the slots and keep the key levers from functioning. Like that. Okay, so this is the bottom left of the comb area, so just underneath the left part of the keyboard, and when I move the carriage to the right margin, you'll see that little plate slide a little bit to the right. That's the line lock that's now locking the tight bars from being pushed down. And you see there's a little spring attached to that line lock plate. If I now pull the carriage back off of the right margin, you can see that that line lock plate now slides back where it should, allowing the tight bars to freely move through the slots of the comb. And what permits that line lock plate to slide back and forth is this angled plate here. This is the margin release mechanism. And it's being pulled by this spring that's attached between this arm and this hole in the casting frame. And one of the things that you might want to notice that's kind of critical to the design of this is this anchor point for the spring is slightly to the left of being perpendicular to the frame of the machine. And what that means is this spring is not only pulling upwards or toward the front of the machine, but it's pulling this lever slightly to the left. That is a crucial design feature. When you push the margin release key, it slides this lever to the rear of the machine, and then that spring, when you release the margin release key, the spring pulls the lever back to its rest position. So there's a slot in that lever that allows it to slide back and forward based on the action of the margin release key. But the, there's a bolt, the shoulder bolt, and that acts as a pivot that also permits this arm to s rotate around that bolt. In fact, the bolt, the end of it is right here in the casting. So it has to rotate freely like this to release the line lock. This is looking underneath the left ribbon spool mechanism. This dark gray plate is the lever that operates the margin release. So when you press the margin release key, 
it pushes that lever back and the lever is operated there is a slot in the lever and it slides on this machine screw right here and that will release the margin in the back of the machine to allow you to move the carriage beyond the margin stops but also this screw that it's sliding on has a shoulder on it and this is not only a sliding back and forth lever but it pivots uh, around that screw like if I can do it here well, I'll just operate the margin stop here like that that's at the margin the uh, the margin lock plate is now locked locking the keyboard so you can't operate it but when you move the carriage slightly off the right margin see that slight rotation that's what releases the keys to operate and again that spring tension that allows that plate to rotate is that long spring I showed you on the bottom of the machine well, as it turns out, the problem with this was this sliding plate was okay. It was free enough to slide back and forth, but it wasn't quite free enough to do the rotation movement. And what I had to do is gain access to remove this shoulder screw and then clean underneath this plate between the bottom side of the plate and the surface of the casting underneath. It was just totally grind up with really hardened greases. So there are these two screws that you remove and that enables you to remove the entire left ribbon drive assembly. It, it just pivots out of the way. There is a series of wire linkages that will still be attached, but you can move this up and out of the way far enough to get a wide tipped screwdriver bit in there into the slot of that shoulder screw and you can remove that shoulder screw completely. And then uh, how I gained access underneath the clean it is I used mascara brushes that I angled and was able to scrub underneath that plate with with some like lacquer thinner and alcohol and flushing with lacquer thinner and cleaning the bottom uh, shoulder of that shoulder screw to, to get it nice and clean and then reassembling the shoulder screw onto the plate properly and then of course putting back the ribbon drive mechanism onto with these two uh, bolts right here and uh, then after I did that the line lock was able to freely release itself now that that plate can freely rotate pulled by that angled spring on the bottom. You know problems like this line lock issue and then earlier the uh, other problems with the machine that I've had to tackle this reminds me that my methodology for repairing typewriters is different than if I was a professional repair person this is why, for instance, my local repair expert here in Albuquerque is John Lewis, and when he works on a typewriter, he tears it apart down to almost the last subassembly and cleans, degreases, and gets everything fixed up. And the reason why is he doesn't want a recall. He doesn't want the thing to come back and he would have to service it all over again. Not only does it mean he has to work on it more uh, without being paid any more money, but it means that it's inconvenient for the customer and it gives him a bad reputation. So in my case, I'm trying to keep from having to tear these machines apart down to the last nut and bolt because I'm not an expert on putting them back together. So I try to do the minimal amounts of repair that are necessary and sometimes the problems are intermittent and I have to figure out how to fix them afterwards. And that's part of being a hobbyist tinkerer with typewriters is we all aren't necessarily experts like a professional would be and we aren't under the same economic constraints that a repair person would be under. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have problems with line lock, because a lot of the typewriters that have a line lock feature work very similarly to this one. Well, I hope you stay creative, do good work, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.